Years after the release of the GNOME 3 desktop, users are still split on its divergent desktop behavior. Some say its changes heralds the bright future of what the desktop will become. Others scold its unconventional and controversial changes to desktop behaviors. If you're unhappy with the default GNOME desktop, here are three distros you should consider that try to modify GNOME to make it more appealing to users out of the box. So the first one we're going to take a look at is a desktop called Zorin. Now Zorin is based off of the latest Ubuntu LTS release. And particularly we're looking at Zorin OS 15.1. This is the a core release. They have an ultimate release as well, which has some extra packages which you can purchase, but I want to look at some basic distinctions between this and the standard GNOME desktop. So this is GNOME, but they make some uh, amazing changes to it that I think make it very applicable and appealing to many users who might not like the traditional uh, GNOME desktop that's out there today. The first thing is at first when you look at the bottom bar you're greeted by a very familiar Windows 7 or Windows 10 kind of appearance. You have the clock on the right, uh, the system settings on the right, as well as your icons, your open windows, or your favorites, your task bar down here at the bottom, and then an icon for your applications menu. So this one looks very similar to what Windows 7 would have looked like, and that's exactly the way they designed it. What makes this incredibly helpful is out of the box, they give you uh, some custom tools that they've designed, like Zorin Appearance. And Zorin Appearance allows you to choose the particular layout that you prefer. So whether you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, you can choose their Windows 10 styled layout, the icons selection, which is more of a Windows 7 styled layout. So when you open up applications. It shows them down here at the bottom as well, but it shows the name rather than just the icon. Or if you have a touch screen or, or a two-in-one, you can choose this uh, touch layout. And this touch layout, as you can see, has more of a floating taskbar at the bottom here, which would work a lot better on uh, touch screens or, like I said, two-in-one laptops where you have the, the touch screen on the laptop. And you can simply select the icon you want to open, or a button here that allows you to access the activities overview. And if you select the Z icon, it brings you straight to the applications menu of the GNOME overview. So you're greeted with this app grid that shows all of your installed applications. These Zorn tools also allow you to have things like the home, uh, trash, and network servers icons on the desktop by default as well as you could position the title bar buttons on the left side or the right, enabling your animations. And then they also come with a default theme, which you'll notice that not just in the vanilla gnome, the rounded corners are on the top uh, left and right side of each window. And for many windows, Zorn puts them also rounds them off at the bottom right and bottom left. So it's a nice complete kind of look that uh, I personally like, and it allows for a very well-rounded design, pun intended. So from the theme settings, you can change the accent color. You can also change the background, so if you want a light or dark theme out of the box, it immediately changes both the panel and the window coloring to the darker theme and the accent colors change depending on which one you choose. If you wanted to set a custom theme after you install it, you could change it right in this area here. You could go to the uh, GNOME's default theme or their default dark theme as well. And you can even change the icon setting to something you prefer, as well as the shell theme. And then by choosing something up here in the Zorn settings, it defaults everything back to normal. You can also modify the panel, and you can choose whether the panel is at the top or the bottom, as you're seeing here. You can choose the height of the panel. If you wanted to go towards something a little more standardized, which is a smaller panel. Even whether to show the activities button up here, if that's something you don't use, and uh, just prefer switching through windows up here using the uh, the favorites bar, showing a desktop button so you can see the desktop. So you can see they've done a really good job at customizing this out of the box that you can make these modifications very simply and easily. 
including uh, auto hide, which gives the option for IntelliHide. So if there is a window that is going over the top bar, it'll automatically disappear. And then, of course, the standard changes, like you can add the date to the calendar, the seconds, the week numbers. You can also have a more standardized look by changing the taskbar up here from the center to the left, which you'll see now positions it over here. You can group applications. So that's one very handy tool about uh, Zorin that makes its implementation of GNOME a particularly a user-friendly and enjoyable experience. They, they give you a lot of these options out of the box and give you some very desirable customization options that you, many of us kind of wish were in GNOME to begin with. They also have a very cool program they've created called Zorin Connect, which operates a lot like KDE Connect, which allows you to sync your mobile phone with the Zorin desktop and allows you to browse from photos from your phone, sync your phone's notifications, reply to text messages, and uh, use your phone as a remote control for your com computer. So whenever you get a text message, it'll appear up here in the notification section, and you could use your keyboard to reply to the message. Uh, same with whenever you get a phone call, if you're listening to music, it'll pause the music. You know, all of those nifty things that come with being able to uh, connect your phone to your desktop or your laptop and enjoy the features of that. So this is one, one great option for if you are looking at an alternative to the default GNOME desktop but want to enjoy still the benefits of Ubuntu and all of its support and applications that it comes with, Zorin is absolutely a great choice to look at. So another great option is the Elementary OS. Elementary OS is also based off of the Ubuntu uh, 18.04, uh, the latest LTS release, if we look in there about. And so you can see right here. But they do a marvelous job at radically altering the GNOME desktop to be very, much more almost Mac OS in appearance. This uh, desktop that they custom make is called the Pantheon desktop, which appears to be a fork of an earlier version of GNOME 3 from the way it looks to me. Uh, they also offer custom version of GNOME apps like Epiphany, their, uh, the GNOME web browser, uh, Mail, which is based on Geary, the uh, email application, Calendar, uh, Music, Files, which is Nautilus, Videos, their Photos, uh, and even their System Settings app is radically uh, different than what the GNOME Settings app is today. They use a more icon-based menu selection instead of GNOME's list selection that they have in the left-hand column now. And for many users I know that, whether it's Linux Mint or uh, Elementary, this can be a lot easier for them to navigate through just because we tend to associate selections based off of the icon, uh, so sometimes even more so than the, uh, the words that we're reading. So that, that can be a very handy thing. As well as you can see the header bars and the styling of this Windows system seems very similar to the, uh, the Mac operating system. And even when you look at certain things like going up here to their, uh, you see the keyboard shortcuts are using the command symbol instead of the uh, super key or, or the Windows key. So you can tell this was very much designed to uh, likely replace Mac OS on a lot of uh, Macs out there, whether it's new ones or old ones. Not to say that that's exclusive, you can still run this fine on any PC as well. And uh, the shortcuts will also work just fine. But you'll see a lot of nifty, very different things on Elementary that they have completely taken with GNOME and turned it into their own. So things like the, uh, the App Center is completely customized. They have made it into something that completely suits their needs. The categories are turned into these nice blocky thumbnails with very easy to understand symbolic icons that can help you to quicker see what each category is about. And then they very nicely list the applications that are available, making it really enjoyable to search for the apps that you want to install. Their application menu is up in the top left here, and out of the box they have a very minimalistic set of apps installed. What you're seeing here is everything that they have installed by default, which is very different than what you'd see off of many Linux distros. You can also switch that to a more traditional view where you can see the categories and list the apps based on each category. 
as well as searching for the app and the actions or the settings. So it's not just searching for apps. This application search bar allows you to search for multiple uh, items. And then they have their own unique way to approach the activities overview with this multitasking view. So if I had a couple of different windows open here, and I went to multitasking view, you can see the window spread very similar to the activities overview. And you could see the switching between the workspaces down here, as well as the creation of new workspaces if you wanted. And then you can go back to the, the selection here. So instead of having an activities overview up here or a hot corner, they simply put it down here under multitasking view. Which in my mind does make it more intuitive and easier to understand the purpose of this view for the user rather than simply saying activities up here at the top left corner, which in my view has been ambiguous for a lot of people first exploring the GNOME desktop. You can also see up here at the top bar that the uh, appearance has significantly been changed to meet the needs of the Pantheon desktop as well as the elementary OS uh, developers, that it's just it, things seem a lot smaller. They don't seem as padded or as big as they do on the uh, GNOME default uh, desktop. Things from modifying the volume to going into the sound settings, uh, looking at the notifications, which they have an, a bell icon just for the notifications as opposed to going up here. Uh, GNOME would have you go to the date and time section up in the top in order to see the notifications and elementary OS has it over here at the right as well as their uh, user account settings and their selection of suspending shutting down the uh, the computer and so forth one of the things I love about both Zorin and elementary is the way that they market themselves as a marketer myself to see that they immediately out of the box show their product as a uh, the fast open and privacy respecting replacement for Windows and Mac OS. So immediately they're advertising themselves as an alternative to Windows and Mac OS and showing that they are a desktop that is designed for everyone. This isn't just for a, an enthusiast or a, a programmer or developer. Uh, this is for people of all kinds, uh, graphic designers, video producers, average uh, users who just use it for the web and for uh, for watching videos and emails, uh, social media. It contains everything and they do a very good job at just making, making getting around on your computer very simple and easy to use. So this is a great choice that I would recommend along with Zorn if you found that the default GNOME experience is something out of the box that you don't enjoy, whether it's the top bar in GNOME or whether it's the large header bars or the exclusive behavior inside of the super key in GNOME, uh, I would heavily recommend that you check out Elementary OS and see if this is something that you might enjoy being used as your daily driver for your daily computer needs. The final choice I'm going to recommend looking at is, ironically, Ubuntu itself. So ever since the 17.10 release of Ubuntu, they have switched over to using GNOME as their default desktop environment. Many of their applications that they've already been using are GTK based, which means that they were made using the GNOME development toolkits, and so they were already compatible with the GNOME desktop. But ever since the switch, the Ubuntu desktop team had been concerned that such a radical change would have intimidated many users who had just gotten familiar with the Unity desktop, which was their default for many years. So they had tried to merge the two effectively by using extensions to the GNOME desktop in order to offer a lot of user-friendly expectations that their users already had. So take, for example, the default behavior on the GNOME shell is that there is no dock or taskbar on the left side here. So this is the default Ubuntu desktop at the moment in the 20.04 beta uh, LTS release. And you'll see that out of the box, it immediately shows the favorites bar or the dash in the form of a dock. So if we go into settings, we can immediately see that the dock setting is available here which makes modifications to the left panel here, which isn't included in GNOME by default. So we have the chance to auto-hide, or more appropriately, IntelliHide the dock, so that the dock will disappear, 
when any windows are overlapping it. You can also change the icon size and position on the screen to the bottom or to the right, whatever you prefer. So this is something you don't have in GNOME that, that I know many users who don't want to press the super key every time to change the windows is particularly pleased about. So instead of using the super key every time you wanted to switch the windows in GNOME, you could simply move your mouse over to the dock and switch them right here. So that's one useful adjustment. Another one is that they include a system tray-like app indicator up here at the top. So for users that use Dropbox or OBS for screencast recording, uh, or maybe Pithos to listen to music, you have those icons appearing up here in the top so you can manage them as to where by default if you ran Dropbox in the vanilla session of GNOME, the default session, there wouldn't be an area that you could actually access Dropbox and make changes to your settings there. So not having that by default is a, is a big inconvenience that the Ubuntu desktop developers noticed for their users and so they added that in. And the final one that may seem small but is significant to quite a few users is that desktop icons are also enabled by default. So that if you wanted to create a new folder, you could do so and move it around to different locations and position these wherever you like on the desktop, as well as make certain changes to copy or cut or see the properties uh, to open them in terminal or in files. So if you're looking for a more user-friendly version of GNOME that has a couple of extra helpful features that are included out of the box, I would certainly give Ubuntu a look and see if this might be the desktop that would be better suited for your needs. So in conclusion, there are plenty of good other desktops out there that aren't based on GNOME like KDE Plasma, Mate, XFCE, LXDE, and others. But I wanted to show you that just because you don't like the default GNOME desktop doesn't mean you're without options. Even if you don't want to customize the default behavior of GNOME yourself, there are plenty of great options for a beautiful, user-friendly desktop out of the box. So which one do you like best? Comment below and share your thoughts. And please like this video if you found it helpful. And subscribe to Linux TV, the channel with Linux videos for everyone. Thanks for watching.